Hello and welcome to Mike's Arts and Crafts. I'm Libby Hoffmeister and today I'll be sharing another card making for beginners video. This time it will be on stamping. To get started, I just wanted to say that this is just a basic video um, with the most important information and really basic information. Um, and if you are interested in other stuff or if you think I missed something, leave a comment down below and I will help answer that comment. Or I um, will create a new video featuring uh, more specific things on stamping. So I just wanted to say that before I got started. So the first thing that is great for stamping are acrylic blocks. They come in all different sizes and are the most inexpensive out of a stamping tool that you can get pretty much. Um, but yeah, acrylic blocks are really great for beginner stampers or more um, advanced um, stampers. And um, yeah, I think they're just a really great tool for anybody in the craft room to have. Um, so I am going to stamp um, this image with some Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink. This is a dye ink, which means it will soak into the cardstock. I am hoping to do a video on inks and ink blending in the future, and I will talk about all the different ink types and um, go into more in depth there. I'm just using a printer, a printer paper to stamp on right now, and my ink is a little bit dry. That's why it didn't stamp perfect. Um, next, the next item is the We Are Memory Keepers All-in-One Tool. This is definitely a little bit more expensive, but I really recommend it for beginner crafters because it has everything you need. You can do, you can trim paper, you can score paper, you can stamp, you can create envelopes on it. It really has a lot of different options for you. And so you can see that you just place the stamp on the stamping platform and press down to um, ink up or to stamp the image. And so this is a really, really great option for beginners. It is a little bit more pricey, but it's um, definitely worth it because of how many different tools you get on it um, as a beginner. Now, my most favorite item is the Misty Stamping Tool. Um, this one is definitely for more advanced crafters, um, and you can see you can double stamp without the image shifting, which is a really nice feature of the Misty that I really, really love it for. Um, I definitely did not invest in this product um, when I first got into stamping. It's definitely worth it, though, if you want to go that route, um, but it is definitely more expensive. Um, I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Big and Bold Sentiments today. Um, this is a clear stamp. Clear stamps are made out of photopolymer, and they are clear, as the name would imply. To get them started, you just have to rub them because they have a coating on them when you first get them. You can do that with an adhesive eraser as well, which is really, really cheap and has more than just the use of um, getting the coating off the stamps. Then it will stamp perfectly, and yeah. So I'm sharing that one with you today. This um, this is a um, background stamp. It comes on a foam um, pad and then it has a rubber stamp, which is the red part of the stamp. And you can just add the ink over the stamp and then stamp it. It stamps a lot like the, um, they all stamp really similarly to each other. I just wanted to share that with you. Um, but it stamps a lot like the clear stamp. Um, I just inked it up and then I used a air hockey puck, but you can use a dry eraser. Um, you can use, um, there's special um, things that can help you. And it just helps to get a nice even um, pressure over the stamp so you get even coverage when you stamp. Um, and that's a really, really great option. To clean my stamps, I just use like a little bit of some cleaner and I just spray it on there and then clean it off with a rag. Um, here you can see me doing the clear stamp. I um, rub off all the ink on the front and then I go over to the back and I clean that off. Um, it's really important to get the back as well because that's what helps it stick to the door of the Missy or um, on the acrylic block, things like that. And if it falls off, it can be really annoying. So I suggest um, cleaning the back as well. There are plenty of stamp cleaners on the market as well if you wanna get a specific stamp cleaner. The last option for stamping is the, or another option for stamping, there are more options than just the, the ones I'm showing you today, is a um, like a block stamp. And this is very similar to the red rubber stamp. It comes with a foam and the red rubber part, and then it comes on a wooden block, which helps you stamp. And you don't need any stamp positioner or anything like that for this stamp. You just buy the stamp. Um, which is another great and inexpensive option if you are looking for that. Um, next, I'm using Versamark ink. This is a clear sticky ink. It is a pigment ink, so it sits on top of the paper. Again, I will explain this more in a, fu in a future video, um, and I will explain how this works in just a minute. First, I'm going to um, uh, anti-static powder 
uh, my paper. So I'm just using this anti-static powder tool. There are plenty on the market. They're not super expensive. So um, yeah, they just help get any static off so embossing powder won't um, go anywhere else um, besides where you want it. So I just stamped this. It's hard to see on camera. It's easier to see in person. And you can see my stamp had a little staining. So you can see it there where the blackish part is. And so, yeah. Then I'm just using some embossing powder. This is Simon Says Stamp Antique Gold Embossing Powder. I pour it over top and it will stick to the areas of the um, where you stamped it with Versamark embossing ink. And then you can use a heat tool to heat it up. Um, I'm hoping to do a video on embossing in a later video. I just wanted to share a little clip of embossing because it's one of my favorite things to do um, with stamping. So I wanted to share some of them today and that happened to be one of them. I'll hopefully go into depth, depth on the different things you can do with embossing and more on how you do it and get into it. Um, I'm th then just going to flip this panel over so that you can see another technique with stamping, another one of my favorites. Um, so I have some dye inks. These ones are from Concord and Ninth. This means they will soak into the paper. You can also do this with pigment inks and it works really well. I also have a blending brush and I have added the darker color onto the top there and then just blend it out with a blending brush. And then I will bring in the um, lighter color again on the bottom and then I will um, blend it out with the blending brush and it creates this really cool ombre look between the ink colors. Um, another one of my favorite techniques. You can also um, use a little paper towel to blot the ink um, and that works as well if you don't have a blending brush because blending brushes can be a little bit of an investment so um, a paper towel works well for this as well. Um, and you can see it gives a really really nice blend between the colors and is very very beautiful. Um, a great technique. Another technique is, um, is watercolor stamping. Um, any of these techniques, they can be done on different stamps. I'm just using one stamp today to keep it simple and not complicated, but yeah. You can use a lot of different markers for this. I am using Crayola Super Tips. You can use any Crayola pen. Those are very, very inexpensive and a really great place to start. Um, I'm going to use two colors, one for the birthday and then one for the happy. Um, and I'm just going to, going to color onto the stamped image. Um, there's many options. You can use Tombows. You can use Karen markers. There's a lot of options out there for watercolor markers. Um, just something that reacts with water is really, really great. I will then, I have this little spray bottle with some water in it, and I'm just going to spritz it over the stamp. And then when I stamp it, it will create this really cool watercolor look, which is a really, really fun way to get more from your stamps as well. I just wanted to share another one of my favorite techniques with you. Um, and just show you another great option for stamping. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to show you today, there's plenty out there for stamping. I will link Jennifer McGuire's channel up in the upper right corner for you to check it out. She has a bunch of different stamping techniques and other techniques for various other things. So I will link that up in the upper right corner for you. Um, next, I'm using a white pigment ink pad. This is very similar to the Versamark ink that we used earlier. It sits on top of the paper. That's why when you stamp it onto white paper, you can get this really cool look. Um, and so I really like stamping with white pigment ink onto um, colored paper, especially dark colored paper. It gives a really amazing look. Um, another thing you can do on white paper is to emboss it with white embossing powder and it gives a very, very clean and fun look to it. Um, there's a lot you can do with that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and come back next week for a new video. If you are interested in any of the supplies I used today, check the description box below. For more inspiration, please consider liking and subscribing. And for even more inspiration, check out my Instagram and Pinterest accounts at my starts and crafts. Thank you so much again. Have a great day. I'll see you soon.